so I'm IPI standardization, um, Ryan Powell, um, and we at the International Press Institute are a 74-year-old um, global network of editors, journalists, and publishers committed to press freedom and independent journalism. Our press freedom team monitors the and reports on the threats to journalists while our independent support work seeks to provide solutions to some of the pressing challenges facing journalism. We built these programs um, at, you know, based on research and practice accumulated over years of experience on how to grow media, to identify and build new revenue streams, and ultimately navigate the many threats and hurdles facing the industry. Um, at IPI's Media Innovation Department, we are really just designing and delivering programs that support innovation and experimentation in independent media organizations from around the world that are facing challenges such as revenue generation, delivering user-first products, navigating the digital disruption, and much more. Um, we provide the infrastructure. This is the stuff like funding, training, and advising media through accelerators, but we're also here to build community and peer networks of innovators to support one another in the industry as it grows and evolves and adapts to some of the challenges that we'll be talking about today. Um, all of this is ultimately with the goal of ensuring that independent media can effectively carry out its, its democratic function around the world. Specifically to newsroom visits, we've been doing these for a few years now. The idea here is to create space for local news media to tell their story to an audience of media builders, innovators, creators, editors around the world. It brings you an inside look into how similar media from around the world are managed, how they grow, the technology they use, um, how they navigate crisis and much more. Um, in the chat, we'll, we'll link to previous newsroom visits that we've hosted, but they're really a fascinating group of organizations from around the world. Um, and we'll be doing more over the next few months. So stay tuned for um, invitations to our, our upcoming newsroom visits. Today, we'll be, we're privileged to be visiting Scrolla Africa. This is an independent digital publisher founded in 2019, delivering news in, in the Zulu and English languages to um, 1.3 million unique, visa, um, unique um, viewers in, in South Africa and beyond. Um, more than just their critical audience and editorial strategy, they really invested in technology in ways that give them an edge to reach users and make sure that they're commanding the market they're trying to reach. They delivered a data light platform, which uses less than a tenth of the data normal sites have and are rapidly expanding their use of artificial intelligence to maximize or enhance their available human and financial resources to make sure they're delivering what's most important. They'll say a lot more about all of this. I'm just giving you a quick introduction. I know that some of you on the call in our accelerators have um, similar questions. You're raising similar issues. So um, I think it could be a very insightful and useful tool for everyone. Um, and today we'll be hearing from their CEO, Mungo Sagat, uh, from their founding director, Zukili Mayova, um, a reporter and translator, Subangile Nonganya, and a news editor, Dylan Betancourt. Um, briefly before I hand over, um, they'll be speaking for about 40 minutes. Um, they'll have a presentation. Um, and then after those 40 minutes, there will be a question and answer session. So please do keep an eye and jot down your questions. Um, and we'll create an opportunity to ask those questions after 40 minutes. The presentation will be recorded and we'll be uh, uploading it to our website afterwards. So um, you can also circulate the session to friends and people you think might be interested. Um, and yeah, if you want to also raise questions in the chat box, that is also fine. But without further ado, you've heard enough from me and IPI. Um, I would like to hand over to uh, Mungo and the team at Scroll Africa to take us in, on a visit to their newsroom. Thanks so much for being here. Ryan, thank, thank you so much, and um, it's, it's great to be with you all today. So we launched Scrolla um, back in, uh, as, as Ryan says, in 2019, but our, our prototype in 2019, and then we launched properly in 2020, and the mission was really to provide high-integrity popular content on, on mobiles to, you know, 
the vast underserved low income audience in Africa. And our first market is South Africa and where most of the team is based. In fact, all my colleagues, um, except for me, I'm in London at the moment, are down there. And today we're going to walk you through, I think, two interlocking stories. One is our journey so far. Uh, and then, you know, secondly, as, as Ryan's indicated, how we've ra rapidly adopted AI tools over the past uh, 18 months to, to improve our product, but also to, as, as Ryan said, to, to cut costs. And I mean, you know, this revolution that we're going through is is obviously unpredictable, um, like like all revolutions. But I mean, in summary, we're of the view that that all aspects of of our, of our and, and other media houses production processes for text, audio, video, are soon going to be automated in in some form with with this um, exponential increase in the technology available. And in this scenario, you know, all that might be untouched is, is the reporter at the end of the production pipeline with a notebook in hand and, and even that probably with an AI transcription program on their phone in, in, instead, of a, instead of a reporter. So the implications are massive, I mean, for um, how, how this profession um, uh, prospers and, and, or, and, and survives. Um, and as our, our chairman, Richard Addis, who's a a veteran media entrepreneur says he describes it as the, as the reformation for journalism, which which um, we think is is pretty apt. Um, so we're going to well, one of the themes of the discussion, and I'm sure the questions is going to be the warnings and the risks of using AI, AI tools, which a lot of us have obsessed about um, you know, for the past eighteen months. But just to get the kind of big disclaimer out of the way at the top of the presentation, um, for now we we never use. Excuse me. We never use AI to generate news copy, um, so we only use it for editing and for uh, image generation. And in that instance, we we we, we flag the the use of AI images to to readers. So, in other words, we've always got a human being, uh, you know, finalizing, re refining, finalizing, and signing off uh, any any text, video, or audio, um, you know, that we that we produce. But just before we get into the AI side of things, just back to the top level view of scrollers. So we've got um, uh, 10 full-time employees and then some contractors and freelancers uh, um, around them. And considering our our, our, our mission uh, to kind of reinvent uh, the best of tabloid for mobile for the African mass market, that's a pretty pretty lean team. Um, and then some high-level points, which Ryan's touched on about, you know, what our... Um, our, our, our core approach has been. I mean, from the start, we've been bilingual in English and Zulu. And uh, as Spongili is going to explain, Zulu's, you know, the biggest first language in South Africa by far, but it's not that well served. So we've been Zulu um, uh, bilingual from the start, uh, producing original Zulu content, but also translating everything we do in English into Zulu. And then secondly, again, as, as, as Ryan's flagged, data costs in South Africa are astronomical, particularly if they are a pay as you go as opposed to contract. So early days, our CTO David developed a, a very low data site, uh, so readers could get access to yeah important content. So you know about governance, society, things which matter, along with uh, you know the fun stuff as well. Um, for about a, you know, as Ryan said, for about a tenth of the 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 data that would be used on a normal site. That site doesn't have video and audio. Crucially, it's just got imagery and and text. And we got a Google um, News Innovation Challenge award for that, um, which was which was um, which was a, a a great kind of early early step in our progress. So today I'm joined by three colleagues, um, each of whom have very specific insights and stories to share. Uh, about our AI journey, and and um, there's just one uh, correction I wanted to make from Ryan's intro, which is that we actually swapped uh, uh, Everson, um, uh, Suzuki Majova, who's one of my co-founders, co with Everson Luhanga um, for a, a reason I'll explain in a second. He's our editor at large, and then we've got Dylan Betancourt, and we've got Spangilin Onyana, who's a Zulu translator. Uh, who who was recently made redundant because of AI advances for Zulu translation, but then we've re-employed her as a as a trans as a, as a reporter in uh, in Shoshan Guve, which is just outside, where she did great things, just outside the South African uh, capital. Um, and the reason I um, decided that Everson would actually be um, more appropriate for this particular focus on AI was, you know, will become kind of self-evident. Uh, but he sent me this message um, shortly after we'd agreed to speak a lineup with, with Ryan Denara, where 
it was just so kind of clear that his um his his personal story uh, but then the way he's embraced AI, AI is an incredibly important. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great insight into the kind of things we're talking about. So we thought it would be better. And Zukile um, very kindly uh, um, passed the baton uh, to him. But before they introduce themselves, we're going to show you a brief uh, video uh, which which summarizes our story so far. Scroller is a new African media and education platform combining high integrity popular news with innovative low data mobile tech. It serves the continent's vast, underserved emerging middle class. In 2024, Scroller reached over 1.3 million monthly unique readers in its launch market of South Africa. From the start, it's been bilingual in Zulu and English. In 2021, Scroller won the Google News Innovation Award for its Data Light site, which uses a tenth of the data of normal sites. Scroller content has been featured on Carte Blanche and on Showmax about a police serial killer series that Scroller broke. Scroller has already attracted top commercial sponsors, including Samsung and Nokia. In June 2024, it launched a new hyperlocal job site, which will also include microeducation tools for job seekers. The job site will increase social impact in communities Scroller serves, as well as providing an alternative revenue stream to traditional digital advertising. Scroller has been featured in Business Day, Google News, and the International Press Institute. I'm Zuzile and Leila from Scroller's translation team in Durban. We're really proud of what we've done so far, but the journey is just beginning to make Scroller the continent's go-to trusted platform for news earning and learning. Uh, so that the voiceover on that video is, is an AI cloned voice of Zuzile and Leila, uh, who, who joined us at the start with Spongile as a Zulu translator. And um, we'll tell you a very specific story about her induction to AI and the voiceover technology later. But first, I'm um, passing over to my three colleagues uh, in Joburg, who, as I said, each have very specific stories about their journey uh, with AI at Scrolla. Everson, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Mango. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm at that large uh, for Scrolla Africa. And I joined Scrolla from the beginning, and I report from ground and um, I, I specialize in reporting about crime in uh, South Africa's uh, economic heartland of Johannesburg. Uh, I started out uh, when when AI tools were introduced, I doubted in, in the first place, but I could probably be described as an AI uh, uh, evangelist at, at the moment, you know. Uh, I came to South Africa uh, from Malawi uh, when I was 19 years, a teenager, and uh, as one of, uh, as many as uh, Malawians who come to South Africa, I started uh, as a gardener. I worked as a gardener for many years. Uh, my employers were uh, great people and they were, uh, they, they told me that I'm too ambitious to be working as a gardener. And they asked me, uh, what is it that I wanted to do when I was in, um, I was in high school and all that. So, so uh, my chosen career has been journalism. Um, I had always wanted to be a journalist since I was uh, 14 years. Uh, my employers then uh, had a great family, and uh, they 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 took me to a life-changing uh, school, a, a decision that they took. Uh, they took me uh, and funded my, my technical uh, education. After completing my studies, I got a job at one of South Africa's major newspapers where uh, I won many awards and I uh, started uh, specializing in reporting about crime. Uh, then I met Mango and the team. Uh, these are hardcore journalists who were, who were uh, uh, trying to bring up a, 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 a publication in South Africa. Then I joined them, and, and which became my love of my life. Of course, uh, with uh, my, my son and my wife uh, who live with me in Johannesburg, and also my uh, two daughters who live with my 93-year-old father in Malawi. Um, I did many big stories uh, with Skroda. The best uh, uh, story being the Rosemary Ngovo, a South African police woman who targeted and killed family members for insurance payout. Although I, did have, uh, I didn't have great education in Malawi, uh, I've always aimed to be a good reporter. Uh, my writing skills needed some improvement, uh, but they but they are much better now. 
thanks to thanks for a training uh, that I organize that SCORA is funding. Uh, then, then interesting part came the AI tools. That was another life changing time. And and one of the weekend uh, on the weekend shift where the there are less people in the newsroom, I'm I'm able to work alone. And it has been an in internal journey where I go into the field as a reporter, write my stories, give the sub editors as an in AI, and and of course uh, give the the the, the uh, AI tools to proofread my stories. That has been a life changing experience in the newsroom, especially when uh, we strive to break important and big news uh, uh, before big uh, uh, social media account published those kind of stories and then started trending. I was one of the people who uh, was resistant to adapt, shift my mindset towards working with AI tools. But after attending an AI incubator with two of my colleagues, that changed the perspective, changed my perspective completely. I am more confident now and I have become an ambassador to advocate the change, which is uh, the future of the newsrooms across the globe. I embrace working alone in the newsroom, breaking big stories, publishing them in a record time. You know, uh, my final comment on, on, on AI tools, uh, they are very efficient, um, uh, is that it won't change the, the ground reporting, actually. It won't change the ground reporting. They always, we always need reporters on the ground to break those uh, important stories. But uh, definitely it will uh, fundamentally change the newsroom, particularly editing and sub-editing work. I'm now going to hand over to my colleague who is with me here, Dylan. Thank you so much, uh, Everson. And Dinara, if you could just go to the next slide for us, that would be great. Um, but yeah, uh, as Everson said, I'm, I'm Dylan, I'm Dylan Bezencourt. I'm, I'm the news editor for Scroller. Um, I actually started as a trainee a couple of years ago, and that was through one of Scroller's investors, which is the MDIF. Uh, they funded my internship. Um, and early 2023, we, we started looking at AI, and I worked very closely with Mango, as you heard from earlier, and we cautiously applied it to headlines, tweets, blurbs, very short form text. Um, but late in that year, summer of 2023, uh, Everson and I, and we had another colleague with us, we were very fortunate to participate in an incubator with the LSE, which was actually supported by the OSF, where we gained in-depth insight into the tools that are available to us and how we can use them. Um, this incubator really transformed our approach, especially for Everson and I. And since then, it's been such a steep learning curve. And, you know, being in a small newsroom, we we have to be able to move fast and change things quickly, um, which I'll be going to a, a bit more detail later. Uh, but for now, I'm going to hand over to Spongile, who will share a bit of her story with us. Um, thank you very much. Um, I've been with Scroller Africa um, from the 1st of May 2020 as a Zulu translator. Um, I was hired with... Um, Zuzi Lendlela, the one who was doing the AI voice overs. Um, we were both, um, I think, two weeks after our graduations, and then we started translating. Um, I was from, I was in on the University of Technology in here in Pretoria, and Zuzi was from Devon University of Technology, and we were both doing um language practice. Um. Uh, Zulu has been at the heart of our product from the beginning. Um, you know, here in South Africa, Zulu is the largest language spoken by about 26% of the population as their first language, significantly um, more than English. When AI translation tools first emerged, we were dismissive because they were ineffective. Um, you know, Zulu is a very idiomatic language and the translations were often um, inaccurate. However, um, this year with the latest software versions, the quality has improved enough to provide a decent first pass of translation with humans cleaning it up afterwards. I am um, a, a testimony of that. It has adopted the speed at which a translator can move sometimes between English and, um, and Zulu. 
As a result of, of that, I was made redundant as a translator, and then I got re-employed as a, a news reporter, of which I enjoy very much because as a translator, I used to see and have an insight of, of how to report and how to write stories. So now when I was moved from being a translator to being a news reporter, it was a little, it was a little bit easier. And then um, Scroller gave me the opportunity uh, as I was introduced to a new training company, the CISOSB Journalism Academy, named after our dear colleague of ours, CISOSB, who was one of the magicians um, who got Scroller going and who tragically died at the age of 25 in 2022. Over to you, Mango. That's really, thank you. Thank you so much. So yeah, then the these uh, three stories from my, you know, my wonderful colleagues, I think give a, a nice introduction to our to our AI journey over the past um, eighteen months. And I think you know we can, I think there's still what we're aiming to do, you know, in, under two headings. The first would be to um, accelerate consumption, and the other one is to dem democratize production. And I'll you know I'll go through them. We'll go through them kind of separately, but just to provide the obvious context, you know, in the current market we're in, the digital digital revenues are being you know squeezed, um, and uh, you know we've had to be um, obsessive about keeping costs, you know, really tight, and that's been challenging because you know it's really hard to produce high quality content which is accessible and clear in a short in a short form format because as all of you know, journalists among us know it's generally easier to write something long than it is to create something short and, and punchy and effective. And, and that's meant, you know, having to, um, you know, invest in, in sub-editing support to help us, uh, you know, do this. Um, you know, so just to kind of add to what Dylan was saying, the experimentation begins in early 2023, deeply tentatively, I think, initially. Um, I suspect like many newsrooms, you know, well, I know like many newsrooms worldwide, we're very careful, worried about distortion, contamination. So we we stuck initially just to um, you know headlines, blurbs, and tweets, basically. And obviously, you know, headlines are the lifeblood of a of a tabloid of a popular news platform. So that was that was really um, that that was useful. And what we found was that you know initially and even now the machine very rarely produces the right headline, but it gives you the idea. So you ask it for a few a few suggestions and one of the suggestions will you know will give you the spark for um for for the headline that you that 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 you the human being uh you know originally um it, it, it eventually kind of ends up with and then as, you know, as Dylan said the, the incubators the incubators uh you know made us um you know more confident you know firstly the uh the LSE one uh last um you know last winter in you know July in in in, in which was um you know held held in London we we attended remote and then this year, Dylan actually went to another uh, incubator um, organized by MDIF in Prague, which was uh, a week long and in person, and it was really incredibly useful because he was he was exposed to um, to uh, to various um, experts who were kind of steeped in the latest uh, tools available, but also the, the kind of guidelines as to how to, how to how to make it work effectively and, and ethically. Um, and that gave us the confidence to start using the software more. Um, and and making really the jump into using them for editing, which we'd been very wary of before. And we, you know, we've discovered, and this is obviously in parallel with the exponential improvement in in in, in these platforms, AI platforms, that because we specialize in short form articles, our, our ceiling is generally 350 words, um, absolute max. It's kind of ideal for us because you know, once an article exceeds that length. Then your risks increase a lot, and managing how the machine is processing text, checking for distortions, and then um, also, you know, addressing the machine will often suck the life out of a out of raw material and, and kind of have a homogenized tone. And you've got to you've got to rebuild the tone basically. But if it's three hundred and fifty, it's it's much more manageable. You have the the raw original, and and your your new product, and it's it's much easier. So yeah, it's ideal for short form, which has been um, you know really uh, yeah really lucky for it. So again, um, never use it for generating content um, or text, uh, and we use it to to give guidance and and um, on, on on headlines, tweets, and blurbs. And we do also use it for um, for uh, for proofing. And I'll, I'll, we had two proofreaders um, who you know were we we you know we had to make 
redundant. Um, um, kind of very very shortly after it was it was clear that that the that, that this technology would um, was a very very effective at proofing. And I mean, you still need a final human eye, obviously, but it, it does the lion's share of the work. And this is one of the things that Dylan brought back from um, from Prague. And I think you know, stepping back, what's been really interesting as we've experimented is that you know when we first approached it. Um, you know, let's say tentatively, one had a view that it was a primarily a kind of mechanistic tool, but in fact, it's actually a creative tool, and it's at its best when it gives you, yeah, it gives you an idea which you can run with either for an intro or a, you know, or a or a or a, or a, or a headline or or a, or a blurb. To the uh, to the next uh, slide, please, Dinara, um, which is uh, appropriately uh, an AI generated um, image of a quite leaky cheese sandwich. Which uh, Dylan will explain in a second why the cheese sandwich actually um, is probably one of the most important uh, takeaways from um, his uh, sessions in Prague. Yeah, um, thank you, Manga. Um, it's a very good looking sandwich. And um, I mean, it was, like Manga says, one of the main takeaways from this incubator where one of the speakers brought this up with us. And um, she had said that how the use of AI in journalism can be compared to a cheese sandwich. Um, where in this instance, the bread would represent the human being and the cheese would represent the AI. Um, and how to explain this is essentially a journalist starts the process, they gather the material there on the ground and the machine cleans that up. And then the bottom piece of bread is the human wrapping it up. Um, and also what that means is there's always a final touch from the from a human, which has become our philosophy and it's become, you know, it's not rocket science for us anymore. Um, and, and as a small team that, that came up during COVID in an online newsroom, we, we, we integrated a checklist into our systems and we, we took this from professions where mistakes are, you know, uh, you know, cannot be made and aviation, medicine, sort of stuff that come to my mind. Um, we've also built editorial checklists, which, uh, that we did from the beginning and we've adjusted those to include AI into those checklists. And what this does is, um, it pushes editors to double check anything, uh, process through AI and helps us ensure accuracy and, and maintaining the voice and tone and, and stuff like that. Um, and then from Prague in the last four or five months, uh, we've created and designed our own GPTs, which are specifically designed for our needs and the different types of stories that we do at Scroller. Uh, we've also trained our editors how to engage with these prompts and refine how the machines work. And we've we encouraged them to have a conversational um, sort of tone and, and ask follow-up questions to the machine to to get the best out of it. So, um, yeah, I'll leave you with that and I'll, I'll hand back over to Mango. Thanks so much. Yeah, so just to can we go back to our mission, which is to to reinvent the best of tabloid on on mobile um, for this this underserved market that we're serving in Africa. I mean, at the heart of this is you know I suppose the essence of tabloid philosophy. I suppose um you know, at, at least until the kind of big changes in, in, in tabloids took place where they kind of became um, kind of, uh, they kind of became unmoored from their, their original approach, which which combi combined accessibility and education. Um, and at the heart of this is, I suppose, combining the news that matters, which could be about governance, society, climate now, and with content that is fun, that is more engaged, you know, that is that is lighter and easier to to digest. And the phrase we sometimes use is that we 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 um, we aim to wrap the news that matters um, in in the news that sells, i.e., you know, the fun stuff. Um, and I mean, I think it's really important to you know we've we've seen as our we've become more kind of comfortable with the technology. You know, the, these tools have really allowed us to do that because they've allowed us to process content more efficiently, and in particular, the lighter lighter fare which doesn't need as much um yeah it does, doesn't meet, need as much intellectual legwork to to get it ready for publication which has kind of given us the resources um and the time and the you know the, the limited journalistic muscle we've got to apply that to the stories that really need um uh, you know kind of journalistic application and 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 kind of thorough fact checking uh investigative material the kind of work that everson specializes in um and so it's been a it's been an amazing um uh, uh, development for us to have to have that more 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 time to do the news that matters um, while um, more efficiently producing um, the other the other content. And I mean, in that regard, I think one of the one of the moments where we got more confident uh, is when I mean, I actually spoke to an old 
friend and colleague of mine who's one of South Africa's leading investigative journalists. And I was, you know, really struck by how he volunteered. We hadn't seen each other for a few months. Just how remarkable this this was, because it just meant that you could, you know, when he was training, you know, young investigative reporters, he could, you know, much more rapidly get to the the heart of the journalistic challenges, you know, checking material, um, checking sourcing, um, getting context, instead of spending, you know, agonizing amount of time kind of re- rebuilding um copy anyway but to to give you um some examples um of uh the news that that sells or the the the, the light affair so on the left here you have a um you know story which was an ag- an, an aggregated story we do um that's uh, yeah probably i think 20 about 20 percent of our stories are probably aggregated and always attributed aggregation um, and this is one of them where, you know, it's a story widely circulated about the, the pilot from a big international airline was caught doing some naughty things um, in, in Joburg. So we did the story and, and the imagery um, uh, Dylan and a colleague uh, came up with using software that they picked up from the the, the teachers at, um, at LSE. And then, um, Dinara, if you could just play the video on the right hand side, another another example Picture this. Thank you. It's 7 p.m. on a Monday night. People are chilling at a tavern in Deep Sloots Extension 2. Out of nowhere, a car comes and its passengers start firing shots. One person is gone forever and two others are rushed to the hospital. One, one more example. So we've got um, uh, a new colleague joined us a couple of months ago, uh, Turf Bester, who's a very gifted uh, videographer, graphic designer. And he um, he's... Uh, he initially was also quite tentative, uh, but he's embraced uh, the soft, the, the, the new tools, um, you know, really, really effectively. And this is the, we, he's been able to kind of do process very quickly, kind of newsreels um, with AI graphics and, and voiceovers, which, um, which we use on socials and also actually run on our own site. And this is just one example we'll show you. Owners near Gianni Limpopo are furious after Kruger National Park staff killed their livestock that wandered into the park due to a missing fence. The farmers claim poachers may have removed the barrier, leading to repeated losses from both wildlife and park officials. Leta Mabanda, representing the farmers, expressed frustration over the lack of action despite previous requests for fencing. The park justified the killings as a measure to prevent disease spread to wildlife. Farmers are now demanding compensation for their lost cattle and urgent action to secure their properties. Brilliant. Um, many, many thanks. So democratizing production, well, this is a um, slightly flamboyant way of just talking about the emphasize, em- emphasizing the importance of training in what we're doing. I mean, I think as Pongile has mentioned, we've got a, a new training organization after Cisway you know, Spear Journalism Academy. And one of the big changes we're making, you know, just a few months into its operation is to add AI training into it. Um, I mean, you know, as as all of you will know, and as Dylan has explained, I mean the the essential tools are very simple, but to use them effectively and reliably, you know, can take a bit of time. And you know, we found, and Dylan's Dylan's done most of the the training, um, and really just for a couple of other uh, editors who who support him when he's doing other things. Um, and we found that you know, like most aspects of journalistic um, instruction and guidance, the, the the best way to do it is, is learning by doing. And so we literally do a screen share where someone will watch it's Dylan Dylan, who's the most deft, you know, working with the with the software um during the editing, um, you know, during the editing processes. And as Dylan has said, it's it's really that dance between running using prescribed prescribed um prompts that we've built for specific situations, specific stories, but then, you know, having the judgment to use follow-up questions and to engage with the machine almost conversationally to refine what its suggestions are and then having you know the following the checklist and then actually you know rebuilding the the tone and voice of the story if it's been sucked out of it by the by by, by the machine again just to emphasize we're very very careful about how we guide journalists and reporters and using ai i mean basically we don't encourage it um but the rule is that if someone we've got we've got um uh, three uh, in-house reporters and then otherwise um, freelancers and and we the, the rule is if you do use it you have to give us we have we need to get the original notes or the raw copy so that we can just double check that there's no 
yeah, no distortion which has been introduced into the process. But 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 essentially, for now, we 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 we're not encouraging reporters to use it, but but then using it um, uh, um, on the on the editing and processing side uh, as opposed to the journalistic side. So look, I mean, what does all this mean? You know, socially. Uh, you know, I mean, Everson's going to just mention briefly before we wrap up the the jobs platform where where um we've we've launched. I mean, South Africa has got. Uh, one of the um, you know, one it's one it's the most unequal society in the world, and it's got a you know staggering unemployment rate. So youth employment is about sixty percent. So you know while one can talk um, you know I suppose quite confidently about how um, these tools can at least be you know useful for small users such as ours in the short term. You know the broader the broad implications obviously um, you know potentially. Um, pretty devastating for anyone, you know, in the media business or in any kind of similar um, businesses which are about processing language because, you know, the machines are already doing a lot, which, uh, you know, human beings, um, yeah, you know, human beings were, 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 were previously doing. And I think, you know, there's no, there's not the scope now to discuss what AI means for the profession generally, but obviously we have the potential for a kind of tidal wave of aggregation um, by the big tech companies, which which could conceivably make what we've just been going through you know, over the past decade look like you know really um, you know much less of a, a more modest threat, and already that's been um, pretty devastating for for um, for a lot of news businesses. But there's this kind of strange twilight moment when it it actually can be um, uh, you know before the the real storm begins, when we're you know, we're competing against the big tech companies who are using all, our, all of our content. There is this, there are these kind of extraordinary advantages for small, small newsrooms um, such as ours. But then again, you know, socially, there's the Eversons of this world, the Eversons, um, uh, you know, who've who've got the um, the drive and the determination to use these machines to make themselves almost, you know, Jack Bauer kind of characters who can do everything themselves. You know, they are likely to be rarer. And and there's there are potentially very um yeah other other consequences which are you know could be socially pretty um you know pretty uh pretty destructive, um but I think that's an important moment um an appropriate moment to hand over to Everson just to give us a brief um snapshot of our initiatives on the learning and earning side the jobs the jobs side which also uses um uh, AI uh, technology. Thank you, Mango. Uh, once again, uh, yeah, we we launched a, a hyper local jobs um, in June uh, this year, and where the market we seek uh, employers uh, who are uh, willing to employ our audience who follow scroller, who read scroller, uh, who visit our website. The jobs uh, site, which uses AI production tools, will also include. An education portal for for job seekers um, across South Africa, uh, uh, across of the province that, that that we cater for. So this has been a, a very very interesting uh, journey for for job seekers who come to our site to just to check uh, if if they qualify for that particular job that we have posted on our site. Uh, uh, Mangwa. The next thanks thanks very much. I mean, while we're talking about um existential uh, changes to humanity, um, we have to touch on climate. So one, we're really, really um, uh, fortunate to have, um, uh, we're, we're hosting South Africa's first kind of climate media awards, which are really aimed at community uh, content uh, producers and reporters in, you know, um, uh, you know, outside of the main urban areas. The idea being that you know climate debate has primarily been confined to 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 elites, um, and you know we want to hear the stories from ordinary South Africans about uh, the, um, the impact of climate on everyday lives. And South Africa, like you know most many other countries, has already been experiencing pretty radical weather patterns. Um, and for example, you know it's 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 summer and it's recently been you know snowing in in, in one um in one area of the country. So just a quick look at that um, at that video. Uh, um, please. Attention all content creators. Scroller.Africa is proud to present the Climate Media Awards, recognizing the incredible work of community media across South Africa. With cash prizes totaling 100,000 rands, this is your chance to showcase how changing weather patterns affect your community. 
Whether you're a journalist, videographer or content creator, we want to see your stories. The Climate Media Awards recognize the community media's reporting on climate change and the energy challenges that are associated with it. Community media reporting on climate change is very crucial because it takes what used to be an elite debate into an everyday discussion by ordinary people. The Climate Media Awards are open to anyone creating impactful content in Isi Zulu, Afrikaans or English. Submit your content before midnight, the 30th of November. Anything posted, printed or broadcast in 2024 is eligible. There are three categories. Category 1, Best Audio or Video. Category 2, Best Written Article. Visit scroller.africa or click the link below to apply. Don't miss this chance to shine. Together, let's bring awareness to climate change through powerful storytelling. Um, thanks so much. That's Bongile. I think um, it would be appropriate for us to wrap up with just a, a few words about Zuzile, who's been with us um, throughout this, this presentation. Um, thanks once again, Mango. Um, as I mentioned before that um, we joined Skrilla Africa uh, fresh from university and uh, both of us had no experience of translating something and it being published uh, for the whole world to see. So we kind of came up, came up with a strategy that um, before we file any final translation, let us send each other's work and then check the mistakes. And then um, we sent our final drafts um, to, the, to the publisher. And then after some, some few months, I can say two or three months, we became the gurus of the translations. And then that's, that's we, and we used to joke about it, that even if you can wake us up at 3 a.m., ask for any translation, we can still do it and it would be very good. It would come out with a very good quality of work. So now, um, as we used to speak uh, via WhatsApp with um, Zuzi, like we, we, we never had seen each other, but um, we quickly learned that she has a very beautiful voice and aspires to be a, a, a broadcaster. Uh, that's one of the significant things we have done with AL AI at at, at Scrolla uh, for using the software for for voiceovers, which may other uh, publications also are I, I think are adopting right now. Thank you. Yeah, and then just um, Spongili, thanks so much. And just you know, one story about about um to finish off with from um Suzile. So, you know, when we um Dylan and uh, uh, Everson go back and they um from their first incubator and we you know playing with the new software we've been introduced to voice amazing voice emulation software um and uh you know we got a very good version of her voice very quickly she obviously she had, she had the best voice among us it was the obvious one to pick and she was happy to do it but then we were kind of you know guided that to get it really good you have to spend a lot of time in a studio a good studio environment um, to teach the machine the the subtleties and the nuances of your of your voice and and local you know pronunciation and and, and language and she's in Durban didn't have access you know none of us had access to a fancy studio but um, one of our colleagues Toby uh, Shapshak in Joburg had a some nice recording equipment in his in his lounge uh, where he'd done podcasts so we we arranged to fly her up to to Johannesburg and I remember I was actually at the MDIF's um, conference in, in 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 Thailand um about 10 or 11 months ago and I, I called her to check it was all sorted with her um you know uh, uber and, and 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 the flight to Joburg and and she said well you know and I'm also just so um, my family's so proud I'm so excited I've never flown before which is 20 26 never never flown before so he has this extraordinary woman who's flying for the first time up to Joburg to spend a day talking um to this machine uh, and reading reading you know back copies of of scroller but the reason um that uh, uh, Zuzile is not with us today is that she's just gone into hospital to have her first baby and you can see her she's um uh, in the front row with the don't panic uh it's organic t-shirt which i'm sure her newborn will be very pleased about and uh she's given us permission to use her voice on maternity leave but i think it's um it's actually crucial that we pay tribute to her and thank her for the amazing work she's been doing with this technology. But um, Ryan, Dinara, that's that's it from us. But we'd be delighted now to uh, answer any questions from 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 the audience. 
Thank you so much, Mungo and team. That was a really fascinating deep dive into the innovations taking place at Scrolla. Um, and I'm sure everyone has been learning a great deal.